There are nine Bible prophecies that point to January 2017. The first two are in the Revelation 11 prophecy. For a more in-depth look at the context of this whole chapter, please watch the video on Revelation 11 that's linked here. We're not going to recap that video here, and it is necessary to watch that in order to understand how this relates to January 2017. This is the timeline Revelation 11 gives us. The two witnesses, the Christians and Jews, will walk the great city, Babylon the Great, over the whole earth for 1260 days or years. And at the end of the 1260 days or years, they will be killed by the beast. Their bodies will lie unburied in that great city for three and a half days or years, and after the three and a half days or years, they will ascend up to heaven. The two witnesses are the remnant. That's confirmed in Revelation 12, 17, 11, 7, and 11, 13. Revelation 12, 14 is clear that before the two witnesses are killed, the bride will escape by flight to the place prepared by God. There are two major clues in chapter 11 about the timing of that escape. The first clue is that it will occur at the end of 1260 days, which we know represent 1260 years. The bride will escape at the end of the 1260 year period. The woman in Revelation 12 represents three things. The constellation Virgo in verses 1 through 6, those in Judea around 685 CE, in verse 6, and all those in the book in verse 14. Verse 14 is the escape that occurs at the end of 1260 years and at the start of the final time times and half a time, which can be three and a half years, which is 42 months. So the woman representing all those in the book in Daniel 12 will escape by flight at the end of 1260 years, starting the final time of trouble, which will last 42 months. The woman in verse 14 represents the bride, which is the multitude of all tribes and nations in Revelation 7. Revelation 12 explains that after they escape, the dragon will make war with the remnant who have the testimony. Revelation 11 confirms that this remnant is the two witnesses who it says will finish their testimony after the 1260 years. So again, all of this is explained in the Revelation 11 video. I recommend to watch that if you haven't already. So the escape and the start of the final time of trouble will occur at the end of the 1260 years, and the 1260 years are marked by both the Christian religion and the papacy rule, which many believe started in 756 CE, which means we are at the end of that 1260 years now. So that is the first reason that January 2017 is important. 2016 was the 1260th year, and 2016 just ended last month. In other words, the 1260th year just ended. And Matthew 24 explains that the stars will fall immediately after that tribulation of the days is finished. The next timing clue in chapter 11 is in verse 10. I'm going to play a very short clip here from the Revelation 11 video in order to explain why verse 10 is significant for us now. The word translated as shall rejoice, number 5463, also means thrive. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive. Then the word translated as over, number 1909, also means before. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before. But notice in the NAS lexicon, the original word meaning them does not appear after this. It moves from word 1909 to word 2165, make merry. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before and make merry. And the word translated as make merry, number 2165, also means joyously living. In other words, living joyously. So they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before and make merry or live joyously and send gifts to one another. Then the word translated as because, number 3754, also means saying. So send gifts to one another, saying, these two prophets. And then the word translated as tormented, number 928, also means vex. 
and the definition of vex is feel annoyed. So verse 10 is saying, And they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before, and make merry, or live joyously, and send gifts to one another, saying these two prophets annoyed them that dwell on the earth. So our second major timing clue in Revelation 11 is that the people of earth will be celebrating Christmas before the bride escapes and the time of trouble starts. So the 1260th year just ended and the Christmas holiday just ended, both mentioned in the Revelation 11 prophecy. January is, of course, always the time period after the people of Earth make merry and send gifts to one another, but January 2017 is significant because not only does it represent the month after Christmas, it is also the month that occurs immediately after the 1260th year. The next reason that January 2017 is a significant high watch for the prophesied event is that January is the 10th month on the biblical calendar. The 10th month is significant because it represents the month that the bride Esther was taken in Esther 2.16. In the story of Esther, there are literary codes that explain that Vashti the queen represents Babylon the great, Ahasuerus the king represents God in the story, and Esther represents the bride of all tribes and nations. In Esther 1, 10 through 12, it says Ahasuerus the king commanded to bring Vashti the queen before the king, but she refused. In Esther 2, 1, it talks about the wrath of the king and how he remembered the queen Vashti and what she had done. That is a direct link to Revelation 18, 5 through 8, which says that God remembered the iniquities of Babylon the Great. And she says in her heart that she sits a queen. In Esther 2.3, it talks about gathering the virgins, which is a code that directly links to Matthew 25, which talks about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. The five foolish virgins think they can buy oil to get to heaven. So think about all the people who have been baptized by the church, who say the creed and call their pastor's father and call Jesus the Christ and claim that they have already been saved, all of which are things that Jesus himself told his disciples they should not do. So in a sense, they have gone to the merchants to buy their oil. We don't want to be foolish and follow the ways of Balaam. Because, as Matthew 25 explains, anyone who thinks they can purchase the oil of God is foolish and will be left behind. The marriage is the event that the five wise virgins attend in heaven. And Jesus explained himself in Matthew 22, 2 through 8, that the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage for his son. This certain king obviously represents God, but it's also a reference to Ahasuerus in the story of Esther. Jesus explains in this story that the king invited those who were bidden, but they would not come. And again, in the story of Esther, the queen Vashti was invited by the king, but would not come. Jesus explains in Matthew 22 that those who do not come are also not worthy, and they are the remnant. In Matthew 21, 43, Jesus said the kingdom of God will be taken from them and given to the nation bringing forth the fruits of heaven. No one really knows what the fruits of heaven are, but I think it's safe to say that they are not persecuting each other up there. Jesus said the tares are bound together by the churches in Matthew 13, 30 and 16, 18 and 19. So the tares are in the churches. They are the remnant. They are those who worship the beast, which Hosea tells us is Yahweh. They are the two false witnesses who have the testimony, the remnant who have the testimony, the remnant who will not come to the wedding, the remnant who say in their heart that they sit as a queen, the remnant who believe the kingdom of God already belongs to them. Jesus said the kingdom will be taken from them because, as Isaiah 10.15 says, they are the staff that lifts itself up. 
they believe they already have the kingdom of heaven. So when they are left behind, they will feel that it was taken from them. All of this is paralleled in the story of Esther. The interesting point in this is that Jesus says they actually do not want to go. In their heart, it says, they sit as a queen. In other words, they have no reason to want to go to heaven if they are already living a life of privilege on earth. The prophecies are telling us that in their heart, they really do not want to go to the place prepared by God. And again, this does not represent everyone in the churches, but it's important because the Bible is telling us that the churches are full of tares. And remember, Jesus said later in Matthew 22, verse 14, that many are called, but few are chosen. He was specifically referring here to those who were called to the wedding, which refers to the people in the churches. And he says, of those who were called, in other words, of those in the churches, few will be taken to the kingdom of heaven. So when you see those rapture videos that are put out by the churches and they show the churches empty after the rapture and just a few people left in the church, that is the exact opposite of what Jesus said. He said the churches will be full after the escape. The churches will be full of those who are left behind and only a few of those in the churches will escape. So if you're going to church, just be aware that Jesus said the majority of the people in there are tares. It's only a few who are wheat in the churches. So that's what the story of Esther parallels. The Bible is explaining that when this escape occurs, a great multitude that cannot even be counted of all tribes and nations and languages will escape. But that represents only a few of the people that are in the churches. That's why it makes a point of saying that the two witnesses, the two billion Christians out of a total of seven billion people on the planet, the two witnesses who represent the majority of those in the churches will be left behind and killed by the beast at the end of their testimony, which has been 1260 years. It's not all of them, but it is, it says, the majority. And Jesus, of course, added to that, come out of her, my people. So he wants you to come out of that so that you do not suffer the wrath because they will be killed by the beast. And again, it's not all of them, but it is the majority. The escape of those who may not feel worthy is coming. Those who may not feel worthy, but who pray to be accounted worthy, Luke 21, 36. Those who are poor in spirit, Matthew 5, who are mourning, the meek, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, those who are reviled and persecuted and lied about. They are the ones who we are told will escape at this coming event. And it says the majority of Christians will be left behind. That's what the Bible says. So why is January 2017 a high watch for that escape? We've looked at three reasons so far. The 1260 years have just ended. The people of earth were making merry and sending gifts to one another before this month. And we just entered the 10th month when Esther the Bride is taken on the new moon of December 29th. And we will be in that 10th month until the new moon of January 28th. In addition to those three prophecies that relate specifically to the month of January 2017, we're also at the end of the 120 lifetimes of war in Genesis 6-3, and we are nearing the end of the affliction in Genesis 15-13 and Deuteronomy 28-30. The 400-year affliction, which appears to have begun around 1619, is due to end around 2019. We don't know the exact date that the affliction began, only that the first slave ships arrived in America in the summer of 1619. 
So the affliction itself could have started, in God's eyes, anywhere from 1619 to 1620. The interesting thing about 400 years from 1620 is that it lands in 2020, which is exactly 1335 years from 685, the year the abomination of desolation was set up. Daniel 12 tells us that right after that abomination, the blessed will then come to the 1335th day, and days represent years. 1335 years after the abomination was set up in 685 comes to the year 2020, and January 2017 is literally three and a half years before that blessed year. The Bible says the multitude will escape for a time times and half a time, which can be equal to three and a half years, and three and a half years is 42 months, which is the time period the beast is given to continue after the escape. So the blessed year most definitely would not occur before the final time of trouble. Instead, it would occur after the final time of trouble. In other words, the falling of the stars and the escape of the bride is due to occur 42 months or three and a half years before the blessed year. Three and a half years before 2020 is now. Next, the 70 years of the nations around Judah serving the king of Babylon is also ending now. Babylon sits on the beast, Revelation 17, 3 through 5, and the beast is the eighth king, Revelation 17, 11. So the nations around Judah in Jeremiah 25, 11, and 12 cannot serve Babylon until Babylon sits on the eighth king, and the eighth king arose in 1945. The first assembly of the Eighth King took place on January 6, 1946. You may be interested to know that January 6 is Christmas Eve in Russia. Within one year after the rise of the Eighth King, they began to establish the creation of the State of Israel, which is the little horn whom the majority of Christians worship. In January of 1947, all British civilians were evacuated from Palestine, and on February 14, 1947, they announced that they were referring Palestine to the Eighth King. On May 15, 1947, the Special Committee on Palestine was appointed by the Eighth King, and the report from the committee was submitted to the Eighth King on September 3, 1947. It was then voted on by the Eighth King on November 29, 1947, and that was the commandment that went forth prophesied in Daniel 9.24. But the 70 years of Jeremiah 25 started when the nations around Judah began to serve the king of Babylon. In other words, the 70 years started when the nations around Jerusalem began to serve the Eighth King, and the Eighth King acquired Palestine when Palestine was turned over to the Eighth King in January and February of 1947, exactly 70 years ago. Remember, in Daniel 9, the 70 Shabua are completed at the end of sins, which is a different time period because Shabua doesn't mean years. It means three different things. So in Daniel 9, the commandment that was put forth in November of 1947, that starts the 77 and that ends in 2024 and that represents the end of sins. So Jeremiah 25, the 70 years, that's different, slightly different. It's all related, but it's slightly different. The 70 years of serving Babylon actually started in January, February of 1947. That's Jeremiah 25. And the commandment went forth in November of 1947. Jesus said one generation will not pass from the time the fig tree Israel puts forth leaves. One generation we know can represent 70 years, so it's possible that he was saying 70 years will not pass before everything on his Matthew 24 timeline is fulfilled, which includes the escape. That could mean that we are not waiting for November 2017. 70 years from that budding of the fig tree Israel in November 1947, he said, will not pass 
Next, the Daniel 9 Prince That Shall Come is due to be inaugurated on January 20th, 2017. I don't know why Daniel 9 prophesied that the people of the prince that shall come will destroy the city and the hallowed thing. But if something were to interfere with the inauguration, or if something were to prevent the inauguration, I believe that could cause the people of the prince that shall come to riot. And the only thing I can think that would cause a delay or a prevention of the inauguration would be an extremely major event. And the prophesied asteroid impact in the Bible would definitely qualify as a major event. That asteroid, we are told, will hit immediately after the 1260-year tribulation. 2016 represents the 1260th year from the start of the papal government and the Christian empire. And the first month of 2017 represents the time period that immediately follows that 1260 years. For more information, please watch the playlist Bibles Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. Thank you very much to those who are and have made this work possible. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you next week.